Hey, everybody. Second Thursday of the uh, autumn season here at Gulfstream Park West. Jason Blewett joining you on day seven of the meet here at GPW. Eight races on this Thursday edition of Thoroughbred Action. A very good sixth race on the turf coming your way. And a whole lot of track announcer Pete Aiello as we catch up with him in just a few moments. Fast and firm on the card as we get into this second Thursday. We run eight. Let's dive into the first. Pete Aiello standing by with the call. This five and a half furlong two-year-old filly starter optional claimer. Pretty good race and two to one. A popular price on the board. Racing at GPW. Good start for Marin's Marble and Tangled Tail marching in from between horses and Crown Real away in the top flight. Down at the inside goes Silvertoon's third last. Princess Ulili is second last of the early trailer is Charge Account. They head to the half mile point and marching in has the lead now by a length. On the outside in Marin's Marvel from second, Crown Real is back to third. These top three have opened three on Tangled Tail, who's fourth ahead of Princess Ulili. Charge Account three wide and long shot Silvertoon's is at the back with three furlongs left to go. Up front, marching in, maintains control at the 5 16 and starts to widen a bit as Marin's Marvel is put to a drive second. From the outside, Princess Ulili has made it up the third around Crown Real, then Charge Account and Tangled Tail, and they're at the top of the stretch. Princess Ulili on the far outside tries to reel in, marching in with 3 16 to go. It's marching in at the eighth pole on top. Princess Ulili down the center, gaining good ground. Marin's Marvel hanging tough from between horses. 16 to go. Princess Ulili and Christian. Torres onto the front, and Princess Ulili will score in the Thursday opener to win by almost two. Marin's Marble second, marching in third, then Crown Real in charge account. Nice closing kick out of the two. Princess Ulili, as I said in the pre race analysis, David Fox, the winning trainer, and apprentice rider Christian Torres have individually brought their A game of late. They were both good, as was this Philly by Uncaptured. Much the best with that big close in the first. We move on to the second, four turf races on the card, and we'll hit the green at a mile and a 16th with this maiden claiming race for three and up Phillies and mares. Claiming prices are 12500 And they're off. Good start for Bitcoin Queen from down toward the inside. Caspi and Tail on the outside, and these two move ahead of a third running boastful Contessa. Out wide is Queen of the Dudes, working toward the inside, Jess Maritza, with the favorite Catnip Kitten. Out wide on the course is Gracie's Dream, third last. Second last, Rosa Star, and the early trailer is Tapazar Girl. Bitcoin Queen and Ray Lou Gutierrez aggressively handled to the first turn, off the lead by five. Caspi and Tail is their second, boastful Contessa, third, Queen of the Dudes, fourth. Catnip Kitten in no hurry, saving ground toward the rail, fifth for Paco, a length better than an outside running Gracie's Dream. Then Jess Maritza, head of Rosa Star, and Tapazar Girl is last. Bitcoin Queen, the daughter of Big Drama, is front and center. She's bumped it to a 10 length lead. Racing in second is Caspian Tail, Boastful Contessa is third. Queen of the Dudes on the outside is fourth. Catnip Kitten is down toward the inside, fifth and un still unhurried. Then Gracie's Dream ahead of Jess Maritza. Outside in second last is Rosa Star. Top is our girl as the trailer as they kick to the far turn. Bitcoin Queen going to try to go the distance here. Swings to the far turn with a still big lead, maybe eight lengths. Racing in second, Caspian Tail. Now Paco getting serious on Catnip Kitten. She got inside of Boastful Contessa. She's on to third, and they're reeling in Bitcoin Queen with less than a quarter of a mile to go. Bitcoin Queen is on the ropes as Caspian Tail moves right by. Catnip Kitten into the clear to take her on. Boastful Contessa is next with an eighth of a mile to go. Catnip Kitten strides forward to take over. Caspian Tail is second. Boastful Contessa is third. Catnip Kitten close to home with the lead. She's wandering, but she's wandering in front. Catnip Kitten and Paco will score. Caspian Tail was second. Boastful Contessa was third, then Rosa Star and Bitcoin Queen. This was really a now or never situation on paper with the eight catnip kitten, and she did not disappoint as a heavy odds on favorite. In for the 12 5, and that proved the winning move for Armando de la Cerda and Jockey Paco Lopez. And with the early double down, we'll take a little time out. We're back with some Florida bred two year olds after this quick break. The best chance for success begins with a solid foundation. At Hardacre Farm, early personal one-on-one -on -one care starts the journey to becoming a champion. 
Bred to leading stallions, our mares represent the highest standards, Hardacre Farms' signature in the breeding industry. Based in Ocala, Florida, breeder and owner Amy Tarrant has inspired excellence throughout her entire career. In your quest for success, start with Hardacre Farm, breeding the champions of tomorrow. And welcome back, everybody. Thursday's third at GPW is coming your way now. It's a five and a half furlong Florida bred two year old maiden claimer. Claiming tags 50,000. And they're off. Out wide, Grand Cacique and Silver Connection. The first two out. Away toward the inside, Sundown Kid moves to challenge. He's now into second. From fourth, Tovar E. Tovar. Then from between horses goes Nathan Secret. Cat Gun Quicks on his outside. A gap of another two to I Am Beowulf. Third last. Second last, Chinamadito. Private Astray is the trailer as they take it to the far turn. Grand Cacique has the advantage of a length and a quarter toward the rail. Sundown Kid is there second. These two at the three furlong point are five ahead of Silver Connection and Cat Gun quick. Then Tovar E. Tovar. Nothing yet from I Am Beowulf. Backpedaling Nathan's secret. Chinamadito second last and Private Astray is last and Grand Cacique is still the target. With less than a quarter of a mile to go Grand Cacique off the turn on top by two. Sundown Kid coming after the leader now. Second, five ahead of Cat Gone Quick. Third and then Chinamadito. Final eighth of a mile. Grand Cacique still there. Sundown Kid still trying. Sixteenth to go. Grand Cacique almost home. It's a riding double early for Christian Torres, Grand Cacique goes gate to wire. Sundown Kid is second. A very good battle for third. It involves Chinamadito, Silver Connection, and Tovar e Tovar. This race essentially over at the break. The nine Grand Cacique broke like a rocket and just had this field at his mercy. This was a good effort. Third time out in the career of this uh, Florida bred by algorithms for trainer Victor Barboza Jr. And Christian Torres win number two on the afternoon over the number one Sundown Kid who ran well in defeat. Fourth race already time for the late pick five and we'll start the sequence on the turf going five furlongs. It's a real tough battle hardened type moxie filled field of turf sprinters and the claiming price is 35,000. And they're off. Honolulu Express wins the break. Our boy Bodie moves to him on the outside. Mr. Edgar has speed with Marcelino up on the far outside. An island tap. Lucky to be in America makes it a party. And the early trailer is Mighty Ghost. They speed to the half mile point, And our boy Bodie has a narrow lead. Lucky to be in America moves through toward the inside. Now to take over. Island tap is third. Down to the inside of Mr. Edgar from fourth. Honolulu Express won the break, but he's back to fifth. Then to the inside and Marcelino second last. And the trailer is still Mighty Ghost. And the leader is Lucky. Lucky to be in America. Cardenas and lucky to be in America with the lead at the top of the stretch from our boy Bodie on the outside. Mr. Edgar looks for racing room under Paco Lopez down toward the inside. Down the center and Honolulu Express is coming on. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Lucky to be in America. Mr. Edgar, our boy Bodie. Honolulu Express. Marcelino all five in with a chance here. Honolulu Express charging hard on the outside. It's Honolulu Express going away. Lucky to be in America was second closer for third. Mr. Edgar, or our boy, Bodie. Wow, that was a big closing kick out of the number five, Honolulu Express, who got a good trip and got back on the turf and cut back in distance. There were a number of variables that changed from his last race to today. Barry Croft had this uh, horse by Adios Charlie, perhaps in the best form of his life. He sail Jaramillo with a winning ride from off the pace. With the first four down, we're halfway home. Stay with us. We'll continue that run around the far turn after this. And Go Zipper is pulling away. Go Zipper blows them away with an eye-opening performance. And let's continue on from the half mile pole. Race number five on this Thursday afternoon at GPW is a three and up Philly Mare claiming race. Claiming prices are 16,000. And we had a claim, our first one today. David Braddy jumped in and claimed the big odds on favorite, the five Princess Latina for 16,000. And they're off. 
Good start for Alyssa's secret from down toward the inside. Cal has speed, splitting horses Princess Latina. Abuela's Love's on the outside. So Princess Latina has an early tussle with Cal, and Abuela's Love situated three wide at the 5 8 Two better than a ridden into the race, Alyssa's secret. Back from there, you have Samoa ahead of Papa's little girl, and the trailer is Tong Shu. They pass the half-mile point and move to the far turn, and shaking free up top, it's the favorite Princess Latina on top a length and a quarter, Cal second. Abuela's Love on the outside, third, two and a half clear of an on-rushing Alyssa's secret from fourth. Then it's a gap of another four to Samoa ahead of Tong Shu and Papa's little girl. Around the far turn they go, five sixteenths from the judges. With the advantage, it's still Princess Latina on top a length and a half. Abuela's love is there second toward the outside. That's Alyssa's secret trying to grind away as they're at the top of the stretch. Princess Latina has to finish what she started by Zayas with a five-length lead. Cow is second down the stand side. Papa's little girl. Samoa is diving to the inside to try to get a slice, but that's all they can hope for is Princess Latina has run them off their feet. Princess Latina for Safi Joseph Jr. and Edgar Zayas Geek to Wire by five in the end. Papa's little girl second, Samoa third, Tong Shu ran fourth. She was Princess Latina, the number five, was on paper, the class of the field, the talent of the field, and had a big tactical advantage. In the end, a solid looking, call me a chalk eating weasel, three to five shot and she just pulverized this field. Uh, Sappy Joseph Jr. and his team did excellent work with this filly and back-to-back -back winners by the way for Sire. Adios Charlie, Edgar Zayas, your winning rider in the fifth. Well, let's turn the page. We come up on an excellent feature. This is a really good weekday turf allowance race in the sixth at about seven and a half furlongs. Timmy M, who was troubled last time out in a good second place finish in his stakes on the drop in class, his favorite from the rail. Timmy M away well. Sovereign Warrior moving up with Farley and Max K.O. on his outside. Great Kahuna is going to try to work forward and use speed to do it. Racing ahead of Morocco and Cable Channel. Mantra is unhurried with a rail run third last. Second last is the comebacker Blue Buff. And the Mighty Judge is last of the ten in the charge around the first turn. Sovereign Warrior gets a pretty easy lead and leads by a length and a half over Max K.O. in second and Timmy M third. Farley is on from fourth outside fifth and Great Kahuna. Then it's Mantra. Cable Channel is mid flight down to his inside goes Morocco third last second last while out a bit wide on the course is the mighty judge and just in back of him is blue buff they make their way to the half mile point sovereign warrior is still calling the shot still leads by a length and a quarter second is Max KO third at the rail is Timmy M they're a length and a half in front of Mantra and Farley with great kahuna out three wide cable channel is next the mighty judge launching a bid now dropping to last is Morocco Around the far turn they go. There's less than three furlongs to run. Sovereign Warrior, the leader. Paco begins to look for racing room for Timmy M on his outside and Max KO. Mantra swung into action on the far outside, then the great Kahuna, and they're at the top of the stretch. Many chances here. Timmy M's got no place to go as the leader is still Sovereign Warrior. Down the center, Mantra coming on. Now the rail open for Timmy M. Can he quicken through? Timmy M gets through inside. Timmy M up for the lead. Timmy M had to be patient. He was and he wins. Mantra second, closer for third. It's a three-way go involving Sovereign Warrior, Max KO, and the Mighty Judge. Uh, this was Paco doing what Paco does. He just leaves his horses alone, gives them their head, and they respond. Timmy M, ground-saving trip, found a seam inside, and that was pretty much it. He got a good trip, he's got talent, and I like this horse for Patricia Generazio and trainer Joe Orsino, and it gets no better than Paco in that ride in the sixth race. And with the opening six down, we'll take one more time out. We've got that late double coming up in just a second. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. It's time for the late double. Welcome back, everybody. Race number seven uh, finale today on the main track and around two turns, three and up Philly Mare claimers. Claiming price is 6250 
motions first, and Maddie Salsa, the last two in, were the first two out as Magali moves to take third. Baby Monster at the inside is fourth, ahead of Felina's Song, and Joker's Queen on the outside. In the charge around the first turn, these top two kick on with Motions first holding a narrow lead over Matty Salsa, who races from second. On the inside, Baby Monster is a joint third with Magali for company on the outside, working five ahead of an inside running Joker's Queen, and the trailer is Felina's Song. They turn into the backstretch, and Motions first tries to slow it down up front. Leads the race narrowly, is up on the outside. Now second is Matty Salsa. Baby Monster is down toward the rail. Magali Park three wide. These top four have three on Felina's Song and Joker's Queen. They head to the half-mile point, and still Motions first the target. In front to half a length, Matty Salsa pressing the issue second. Magali is third in the pink. Down inside, Baby Monster follows along fourth. Then it's the gray Felina's Song and Joker's Queen at the back. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs left to go. Motions first, let out a notch by Martinez and moves to a length and a half lead. Matty Salsa is still second, down at the inside third, Magali. Back to fourth and Baby Monster as they run to the top of the stretch. Motions first, fights to hold it. Matty Salsa with another bit on the outside. These two have been at each other since they sprung it as they wheel in. Motions first, cuts the corner. That helped her cause, and she leads by two and a half lengths. Matty Salsa going to try her again second. Baby Monster is now third. Final 16th of a mile. Motions first. Still the target. Motions first by four. She's got it off here as Motions first and Gaddy Martinez go gate to wire. Baby Monster up for second. Matty Salsa was third. Magali ran fourth. Well, we've already had uh, a two win Thursday afternoon for apprentice Christian Torres. Let's add seven pound apprentice Gaddy Martinez to the W column, did a good job here wiring the field on the six motions first, who blew up the toe board here, maybe not blew it up, but still paid a pretty good price for trainer David Ratkoff as a six-year-old mare by Cowboy Cal. And do note, by the way, a very important late scratch with about a minute to post of the number three, Denver. One more, race number eight brings down the curtain on day number seven. It's a maiden claiming race. These are three and up, and the claiming prices on the turf here are 12500 And runners away. Valid exchange away quickly. Reorganize has speed. A set a on the outside and Royal Duke driving at the inside to try to hold inside position. And the run to the half mile point. Royal Duke now has a narrow lead. Valid exchange alongside second. A set a is third. Ray Lou takes hold of Reorganize to race on from fourth. Then R Prince. Giants Willow to the inside. My man Mike is three wide. Three clear of golden line of the two at the back. Judge Hudson and Tom's Choo Choo. Around the far turn they go. Less than three eighths of a mile to run. A set a in the three path. Royal Duke toward the rail. Valid exchange in between. Reorganized will try to tip and roll from fourth and have my man Mike and they're at the top of the stretch. Still many chances here as they wheel for home. With the advantage it's a set a down the center. Royal Duke toward the inside. Grandstand side and reorganize with my man Mike. They come to deep stretch. Down at the inside. Royal Duke is fighting hard. Reorganized on the outside. Takes a run at him. Royal Duke almost there. Royal Duke will win it. Royal Duke by a length in the end. Reorganizes in a photo for second that he probably got ahead of Golden Lino. Little bit of a layoff, little bit of a drop down, and a big rider change. All that worked out well for the number one Royal Duke, who was switching over for trainer Michael Yates to jockey Miguel Vasquez, and that was good enough here with this call by JP's Gusto in the nightcap. And that's it, our second Thursday in the books. Eight up, eight down. Back at it tomorrow afternoon with an eight race Friday. That starts at about, let's call first post 105 Eastern. Don't forget another round as well of the $100,000 guaranteed Stronic 5. We do here at GPW have the eighth race on our program in the sequence. That entire bet, by the way, kicks off with the seventh at Laurel Park. Good night, everybody. Hit the hay. Tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.